a busy day for the Minnesota Wild as they make a couple of roster moves, a personnel move, and Brandon Duhame joins the show to talk about the Sweden trip and getting back on track under new head coach John Hines. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new content throughout the week. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we discuss a wide range of topics today. We'll talk about the three players recalled by the Wild ahead of tomorrow's game against the Calgary Flames. We'll talk about the personnel decision as the Minnesota Wild part ways with assistant general manager Chris O'Hearn. And we'll talk to Brandon Duhame about life under John Hines, the Sweden trip, and uh, all of that great social media content that the Wild put out on uh, almost a daily basis. So uh, a lot to get to here in today's show. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. So let's start with the roster moves. Uh, because the Wilds, by putting Jonas Brodeen on injured reserve, uh, are now able to uh, afford a handful of players uh, here while Brodeen is on the uh, injured reserve list. And if you saw any of these social media photos from the uh, charity gala last night that the Minnesota Wilds had, uh, Brodeen's in a cast already. So it's likely going to be a while before Brodeen is able to return. And so I think that's why we saw Dakota Mermis sent back down to Iowa for uh, at least the first few days of the week so that the Wilds could take the opportunity to accumulate a little cap space. And now that Brodeen is back on injured reserve or is on injured reserve, I should say, uh, now that the Wild don't accumulate cap space on a day-to-day basis, uh, you you might as well just uh, bring up the whole trio of players. And for all three, they are familiar faces. Mermis and Hunt, obviously, on defense. And Vinny Letary uh, called up uh, as an additional forward for the team. So no longer going to have to just wriggle through games with no extra players or one extra player in the case of uh, being on the road. It's like that these guys are going to be with the team for uh, a considerable while. Um, going forward. And from a defense perspective, I think this is encouraging the most because, I mean, we'd love to see Dakota Mermis get into the lineup as well as Damon Hunt for that third pairing because we've talked at length all season long about uh, the options that the Wild have currently for their third pairing and with the fact that Brodeen being out is going to mean that uh, Zach Bogosian plays a uh, much larger role on this team. You've got opportunities for Mermis and Hunt to be able to come in and not have to be, you know, hidden when they're out there on the ice. You would have the opportunity to play those guys on a more consistent basis than like seven or 12 minutes a night. Because as Alex and I discussed on Monday's show, yeah, it's great to be able to have a uh, group of four defensemen that you feel like you can consistently rely upon. But if you continually ask them to play, you know, 27 minutes a night while contributing on the penalty kill in Brock Faber's uh, case, contributing on the power play and the penalty kill, you run the risk of burning guys out pretty quickly. And so Mermis being able to come in and we've seen what he can do all season. He has been somebody who has uh, been able to help this team out on more than one occasion. And so having him be able to step into the lineup and play more of a role, having Damon Hunt be able to, uh, I think, as a young player, be able to handle the NHL spotlight 
is encouraging for those two guys. And so we'll see now that John Hines has a full uh, squad of defensemen, how he elects to deploy them here in these uh, next few games coming up. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if um, we see one or both of those players in the game against the Calgary Flames. But uh, that remains to be seen, and that's ultimately that's Hines' decision as to who gets in and who doesn't. But I think it was pretty telling in the game against the Seattle Kraken. And some of this, too, is the fact that you had you know four off days before, uh, before your next game. So part of the story, I think, that was telling was just the minute distribution, that y- you've got John Merrill playing seven minutes 50 seconds of uh, of time on ice. I, I don't know. I would rather see Damon Hunt get that spot. And I would rather see Dakota Mermis get the Goligoski spot. If you need Goligoski in a pinch, he's he's capable. But when you start to roll him out there multiple games in a row, that's where you see the problems start to arise. So defensively, some uh, much more appealing options for the Wild, especially for that third pairing. Offensively, look, it it was a situation for uh, the Wilds in recalling a forward. Letary's been the most consistent of the group that we've seen so far this season. And it's not to say that guys like Nick Patan certainly aren't themselves. But Letary looked every bit of the part when he uh, was up with the team earlier in the season. He scored a goal against the Islanders. He looked like every bit of what this team was hoping he would be. And it's no coincidence that he stepped in and he looked pretty darn good on that fourth line um, when he did get inserted into the lineup. But I think this move speaks more to the consistency that Letary has had so far this season. The other options that you've had, you know, Sammy Walker, Jujar Kara, they have been very up and down. And I know from a prospect standpoint, Walker starting to uh, heat up down in Iowa, but so is Letary. Letary had two goals in the uh, most recent game for the Iowa Wild. So it's it's a call-up that is, I think, well-deserved for Letary. And again, situation here where I don't think he I don't think he's going to just be here to sit on the bench is now there is really, I think, a feel that if players in front of him don't play well that they'll end up riding the pine. So uh, an opportunity for uh, for Letary to just try to hop into the lineup. And more importantly, if somebody gets dinged up on the road, now you don't feel like you have to limp by with an 11-7 and seven lineup or anything along those lines. This is the affordability you get by putting a player like Jonas Brodine on injured reserve is that now you can feel the full team. So a nice exhale. For the Wild, obviously hoping that Brodeen comes back uh, before too long. But if there's a cast involved, that's likely going to be a while. So we'll uh, we'll keep an eye there. Of course, we will have a full pregame for you coming up tomorrow as the Wild take on the Calgary Flames. We'll dive into how the Flames have been doing recently and uh, some interesting tidbits on the Minnesota Wild as well. But let's get you to the main course. For today's episode, we had a chance to sit down with Minnesota Wild forward Brandon Duhame, talking a wide variety of topics from the Sweden trip to the uh, social media that we've seen from the team so far this season. And we'll talk a little tattoos as well. All of that coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. If you like to live in the moment, you have no doubt gone through the ticket buying experience the day of your event. And even worse, let's say with the holiday season here, you're trying to buy tickets to an event for a family member or a friend. There's nothing worse than finding out that the tickets are extremely expensive or that you purchase a ticket for someone. They show up the day of the event and find out that their view is obstructed. Game Time is here to erase all of those uncertainties, especially with the gift giving season. Game Time offers you last minute tickets plus views of every seat in the venue. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. 
Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, as mentioned, we'll have a uh, full pregame preview for you coming up tomorrow to uh, take a look at the game against the Calgary Flames in detail, how the Flames have been doing recently, and how the Minnesota Wild stack up against them finally back at home after a lengthy road trip. So that's coming up for you tomorrow. As for right now, let's get to it. We were joined by Brandon Duham earlier today to talk about how the season's been going so far for the Minnesota Wild. And joining us for today's episode of Locked on Wilds, now returning Minnesota Wild forward, Brandon Duham joining the show once again here today. Brandon, glad to have you back. Uh, we checked in with you before the season started. Uh, how have things been going? Pretty good. Um, you know, the team's been rolling, uh, rolling a lot better as of late. And, you know, we're, we're carrying that momentum into these next games coming up. Yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, a a nice bump back in uh, to where you guys want to be since John Hines took over, and we'll uh, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But I do want to go back to the Sweden trip. Had a chance to uh, go overseas for a couple of games. What was your favorite part about the trip? You guys obviously got a lot of time to uh, to bond as a team. Went out to uh, to eat some uh, A plus food. I'm sure. What was your favorite part of the trip? I think, like you said, the, that team bonding. Um, you know, we got we got two games over there, and, and it wasn't the results we wanted. But I think the the experience with the with the teammates, and you know, really bonding, and and uh, you know, just hanging out and um, having that time together as a team was uh, was benef- was uh, really beneficial for us. Was the sleep as big? Was was the sleep as big of a deal as I've heard uh, other players have joined other podcasts and said that it just you know it, it took forever to get acclimated to being that far ahead. Was it as big of a factor as uh, as everybody else has said it was? It it was tough. It, it was definitely tough. I think uh, I think my first good night's sleep was the night before the game, so um, it ended up being good timing and um, got adjusted that way. But um, yeah, it ended up working out pretty good. Go to food item over there. Did you did you fall uh, fall in love with anything in particular? There was uh, there was an Italian spot that was really good actually, and Ooh. yeah, we went there a couple nights. It was uh, it was really good. Okay, good deal. Um, obviously, it's been an up and down season. Not where you guys were hoping to be. Uh, Dean Evason ended up being fired, and you bring in John Hines, and I'm sure that just is a difficult situation for you guys as players. Um, how did you all rally through that as a group? Um, to uh, to get through those tough times and now to be playing some better hockey here? I think just sticking together as a team and, you know, we always talk about how tight we are. I think that it really came to came to show that, you know, whatever whatever happens, we're, we're going to stick together as a group. And, um, you know, we, we took a step forward in the right direction after that. And um, that's a big credit to the leadership for, you know, kind of putting us together and um, bringing us in, having, having some good meetings where we were, you know, we were just talking about us and, and what we had to do. So, what has been the biggest difference since John Hines came in as head coach? I mean, it's it's the same group of players, and by and large, there haven't been any major changes. But but what has been different about having him as head coach since he came on board? Yeah, just a couple systematic changes, just little tweaks, and um, it's, it was nothing where he just came in and changed everything. It was you know, it was little by little, and. Um, he let us play play our games and and really got a feel for us. So I think that you know they're doing a really good job up there and as a as a staff of kind of you know pushing us in in the right direction and and making those minor tweaks and changes. Five and two now since he came on board, and uh, I got to feel like you guys are confident that things are back on track and uh, that you're pushing towards where you want to be, which ultimately at the end of the season is uh, another playoff hunt. Uh, just just how big of a confidence boost have you guys gotten? Now that you are back to playing the style of hockey that you hoped you would be at the beginning of the year, tracking in the right direction for sure. Um, we got a long way to go. We know that. Um, you know, we kind of put ourselves in a hole there early, so we're, uh, you know, we're we're just going game by game and um, just just working towards that uh, that end goal. 
I had a couple of questions from listeners, one in particular about just your overall mindset and mentality when you are going to go lay a big hit on an opponent. Is there anything in particular that runs through your head or are you just like, hey, let's let's just go find somebody and just plant them into the boards? I think just being a little bit smarter here and there, um, <laughs> you know, they, they're they're kind of stressing that stick on puck where, you know, as of late, it's been more, you know, you, you go a few times, you got to finish that hit, but um more often than not now we're just kind of we're poking pucks instead of you know going for that big hit where in the past maybe that puck just goes by and yeah you get the hit but um you know the puck just it keeps going so i think for me it's it's being smart between the either laying the hit or laying a stick on puck or, or something like that so it's uh it's just making the good reads is it true that Connor Dewar, when he scored his hat trick, was the least excited person on the team? Um, he he said that on Wild on Seventh. I think that that he was the least excited for that actual actual huge moment for him. But uh, it seemed like it's true. Yeah, I think he uh, he played it pretty cool. I don't know if it would have been that cool, but um, yeah, that puck was uh, that puck was fine. And I mean, he was you know you guys saw it. His uh, his skill came out. Yeah, he it's it's been fun to see you guys get uh, get an opportunity on that fourth line to, uh, to get some additional minutes. But it's a credit to, I think, what you guys bring to the table of just working hard every shift. And uh, nice to see that uh, that Heinz has used you guys um, more often here through these uh, last seven games. Yeah, that's definitely the identity of, of our, you know, of our group. And I think uh, I think our fourth line especially is kind of that that hard work and hard pressing, hard skating. Uh, you know, line like that, and Hartsy brings a brings a different dynamic to it. Where he, you know, he's making those those real smart plays and and putting pucks in the right spots for us to be able to, you know, forecheck and and find those pucks. And um, you know, it's been going well. How much of a feeling out process is it when you have somebody that that comes into uh, a line combination like Hartman has to just kind of get a, a feel for what he's bringing out there to the ice? I know you and Dewar have been together pretty much all season, but how, how much does it take for you guys to get acclimated to somebody hopping in with you? Because, you know, it was Maroon at the end, at the beginning of the season. And uh, now, now you got Hartman here the last few games. Yeah. I, I don't think it's too much of a feeling out process, especially with this group and, and kind of how everyone's bought in and um, we're all playing that similar game and, you know, the, the skill comes out after the hard work. And I think that's the, like I said, that's the identity of that group and that fourth line is that hard work. And, and Hartsy knew that Hartsy, you know, is a very smart player and, he knows what he's working with, so he's uh, he's doing a real good job for us. I want to ask you uh, about some of the social media that the team has done. Obviously, the back to school video was uh, was one that a lot of fans just just loved, and um, the the ASMR video too. Uh, when when the social media team says, "Hey, we're gonna do this," like what what goes through your head when some of these ideas uh, when they mention them? They were well the. I'd say the Gus Bus commercial was pretty funny. I think we were all pretty bought in on that. Um, I think the ASMR or whatever that was was a little harder to get guys to buy in. Um, I think there was a little bit of complaining and and guys uh, guys not really buying into that one. So um, it was a little bit weird for sure. Um, another listener was curious, kind of what goes through your head on the bench. Um, they they pointed out the maroon fight in particular because the the camera was panning the bench. And you're just going nuts. And so I imagine seeing your teammates kind of get into those types of, of big moments just gives you a lot of juice there too. Yeah, for sure. And I think I think fighting especially is, you know, it's not everyone not everyone does it, not everyone wants to do it. And, you know, guys that are willing to do it is it's a big sacrifice and a big testament to the guys they are for, you know, fighting for the group and, and fighting for the team. And um I just, you know, I get excited for it and I uh I try to show them and I'm excited and, you know, I, hopefully that, uh, hopefully that hypes them up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one final one for you, Brandon, to finish. I know you've got, um, kind of the, is it the start of a full sleeve tattoo wise? Uh, I know you got some on the shoulders, so yeah. just take me through the significance of those tattoos and, and what, uh, what you're adding on to that. Uh, if you are going to, uh, to try to go to the full sleeve. Yeah. So it started, uh, probably when I was 18, um, I got a little bit of work done on my shoulder and then it slowly started trickling down and then um, went to the inside of the bicep. Um, and then actually my first tattoo, take that back, my first tattoo was on the inside of the bicep. I got my uh, my minor hockey team tattooed on uh, on the inside of my bicep and, and all my buddies 
from back home. We were all going to get it together. And then I was the first one to get it. No one else got it. So I, uh, <laughs> I'm the only, I was the only one with it. And then I got, uh, I got a bunch of other work around it. So there's a, uh, that's the story to it. Never forget your roots. That's uh, yeah. that's a huge part of the hockey journey. So, uh, exactly. well, we appreciate the time, Brandon. Thank you for joining the show as now a uh, two-time reoccurring uh, guest here on Lockdown Wilds and uh, best of luck here as you guys get back on track and uh, we'll have to do this again as the season unfolds. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Seth. Appreciate it. How about that? Brandon Duhame joining the show here uh, once again today. And a big thank you to him for hopping on for a few minutes to talk through some of uh, the team's improvements over these last seven games. Now we're going to get to the other news that came out today. If you were uh, scrolling through on Twitter, I'm sure you saw it. And uh, we'll just tell you what we know about the Minnesota Wilds decision to part ways with Chris O'Hearn, assistant general manager. That's on the way after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Whether it be Matt Boldy getting on track and going towards 30 goals, Jewel Erickson Eck hitting 40 goals, or the Minnesota Wild somewhere down the line hoisting the Stanley Cup. And you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether elite-level players like Connor McDavid, Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, or Nathan McKinnon will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus-minus, and more in a given game. All it takes is less than 60 seconds to set your lineup, and then you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Again, a reminder that we have a pregame preview coming up for you tomorrow, taking a look at uh, the Calgary Flames and what they bring to the table going up against the Minnesota Wild at the XL Energy Center. I wanted to touch on what we saw happen earlier today as the Minnesota Wilds mutually agreeing to part ways with assistant general manager Chris O'Hearn. And O'Hearn had worked his way into the assistant GM title and uh, by all accounts has been a very integral part of the uh, Minnesota Wilds chain of command under Bill Guerin. And as Michael Russo noted in his article for The Athletic, had recently signed an extension to uh, remain here in Minnesota. And he had um, been working more closely with the contracts that the the team had signed, as well as uh, any all the ins and outs of the cap, the uh, collective bargaining agreement, all of those types of things. That was what O'Hearn was uh, in charge of with his time with the Minnesota Wilds. And... The news comes out today. The Minnesota Wild had uh, an official statement that they released in regards to the decision, and it was pretty point blank. Chris O'Hearn and the Minnesota Wild have mutually agreed to part ways. The Wild will not comment on this matter any further. Uh, That was released earlier today, and um, as Michael Russo tweeted, this is obviously huge out-of-the-blue news. O'Hearn was Bill Guerin's right-hand man and assistant general manager since 2019 and chief contract negotiator. Now, a couple of things with this situation that uh, kind of, I think, push it towards not having anything to do with the on-ice product is the fact that the Wild released a statement with no further comments. uh, And also the fact that, you know, if if this was going to be something that was done related to what was going on on the ice, it doesn't make sense to do so after a 
five and two stretch after uh, John Hines, if there was supposed to be some sort of turning the heat up on Bill Guerin for how the team had been performing, that heat was getting rid of Dean Evison. And so this seems like something that with the fact that um, Russo had reported that O'Hearn just recently signed an extension, that he was with the team on the road trip. Bill Guerin did not travel with the team on the West Coast road trip. O'Hearn did. So the fact that he was with the team on the road trip and this just all of a sudden pops out of the blue, uh, I think leads you towards a different scenario. Now, as for what exactly happens, I, that's irresponsible to speculate even remotely as to what happened for for this to get to this point. But look at what happens when the Wilds made the decision to um, relieve Dean Evison of his duties and Bob Woods. There was a news conference. There was a uh, lengthy release from the team. None of that in this situation. And so the fact that you get just a statement and that there has not been anything further, as Russo noted in his piece, his athletic article, uh, Bill Guerin did not return text for comment. Um, this just does not seem like an on ice thing for me. That's as far as I'm going to go into it. If there are any further details that come out, um, we'll, we'll go into them as they are made available. But this and the fact that last night, the St. Louis Blues made the decision to uh, part ways with Craig Berube and relieve him of his duties after a uh, lackluster start for the St. Louis Blues. A decision in which Barubi paid the price for the sins of the roster, much like Dean Evison did. And so I, I find it interesting that we've seen so much just chaos and these coaches being fired for pretty much identical reasons. Like, go to Edmonton. And it's pretty, like, it was pretty evident that there were some flaws on that roster. Players were not performing up to the level that they needed to. And instead of trying to get rid of all the different players that aren't performing up to par, you end up moving on from the head coach. Edmonton's playing their best hockey this season. They've actually vaulted into a playoff spot based on points percentage. Then with the Minnesota Wilds, this, this roster has certainly some, uh, some flaws to it. But the team is 5-2 and two since John Hines took over. And it's easier to get rid of the head coach than it is to move the entirety of the roster. And now St. Louis, the exact same thing. Is you have a bunch of different players that just aren't performing up to the level that they need to. And so for the third straight time, the general manager outlives the head coach because the coach couldn't win with the roster that the uh, general manager put together. So I find it interesting that, um, that we saw that with St. Louis last night. And one of the names that is rumored, at least initially, now there, there haven't been any interviews or anything, and St. Louis has named an interim head coach uh, from their AHL affiliate to finish off the season. But he has an interim tag. And so it is entirely likely that St. Louis will be looking for a new candidate in the offseason. And those two, Jay Woodcroft and Dean Evison, have uh, at least initially been linked to that team. And if we have another Mike Yo situation where he gets fired by the Wilds and goes to St. Louis, I'm going to I'm going to scream. <laughs> Because once is enough. It'd be I, I would like to see Dean get one of those opportunities in Canada, Ottawa, maybe, once DJ Smith is is finally relieved of his duties. But 
it's just it, there, there's been so much chaos in the Western Conference so far this season. But make no mistake that um, the the GMs for all three spots hoping that uh, their teams starting to win a little more consistently can get things back on track because those coaches didn't put those rosters together. That's all the GMs. So just just interesting things to note here uh, over the last couple of, of days. And as far as the Chris O'Hearn situation goes, that's all we have to report at this point. And if there is even any further added to it, that remains to be seen, but um, it just, it, it to me does not look like something where the on ice products led to a guy losing his job. And so that's, that's as far into that as I'm going to go. So that'll do it for today's episode. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day of the week. We'll have a new episode for you coming up first thing in the morning, previewing tomorrow game, tomorrow night's game against the Calgary Flames. So make sure that you uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on any new episodes and tell your friends about Lockdown Wild if they have not already joined the listening audience. They can so that they don't miss out on any news and notes throughout the rest of the season. Lockdown Wild's giving you new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.